So the Whitbread Gold Cup is next and this is one of the biggest and most competitive handicaps of the season but as you can see we have got a huge field of 24 or so and we've only got three in the handicap and makes it a little bit awkward and makes it not really the race it's supposed to be but it's Fort Lauderdale the top one for Paul Rose Battle for Sparta Josh Sutherland it Marbo Darren Thompson's number three the mighty eight Josh Sutherland that's the horse that benefits the most from the weights as he's the top one out of the handicap major Barry Darren Thompson eyes to the right grand principal gospels Leon van Rensburg break free Molly at surfer Princess Peach David Robertson Napoleon's boots Stu Gray Silver King Darren Howes Venture to Cognac Martin Lidham Phantasmagoria Obi Wan Charmy Blur Daniel French, Karate and Warpointer, Alex Cherry, Streets of War, Darren House, Half Hour, Hancock, Stu Gray, Stoke Hill, James Follis, Musa de Boat, Martin Lidham, No Half and Talk, Leon, Derek Hinton, Lucky Money, Peter Hannan and Johansson, Carl Arrogante. Those ones down the bottom are going to really struggle because they are a million miles out of the handicap. It's a very short run to the first. The rain's coming down and off they go. Towards the first then, and up they go. Now we lost a couple already there. Major Barris and Venture de Cognac have gone at the very first fence. So early departees there and break free is the leader racing into the second with on his inside Johansson and then Fort Lauderdale the top weight on the outside in third as they come down to the second and skip over that one over that one okay and break free by about a length this with the last one next oh we've gone break free is gone a faller so that's three gone already we've only had three fences and three fallers as we caught now past the stand and the winning post for the first time they've got two complete circuits off Sandown Park to go and Johansson is in the lead from Fort Lauderdale second Princess Peach's third looking one is four then comes the mighty eight and talk Leon as we see them from the stand and now it looks like we're going to play jockey cam for a while so let the visuals do the talking So back of the race then, Johansson is in the lead, and Lucky Money is second, top weight Fort Lauderdale is third, and comes eyes to the right in the mighty eight as they skip over that ditch, and no half is just the back mark with Gospels also towards the back, we still lost just the three, Major Barris and Venture to Cognac at the first and break free at the third, but Johansson comes into the next, which I think is going to be the railway fences, Lucky Money second, Fort Lauderdale third, Mighty Eight four, and Half Hour Hancock on the outside in fourth. It is indeed the railways, and over them they go. And we lost another one there. Karate's gone, so Karate gets the chop, and he's out of the race. Over the railways, and now race down towards the pond. And Lucky Money's in the lead. From Johansson second on the inside, Musée de Beauart is surprisingly close up in third. And Fort Lauderdale with top weight, eyes to the right, Mighty Eight, Napoleon's boots. Sharma Blur. What if you graze in this? As we see them racing away towards the pond fence. And Lucky Money and Johansson from Fort Lauderdale in third. Bit of a gap then to the Mighty Eight. Nice to the right. Then Battle by Sparta. Phantasmagoria, the first of the greys. With no half the second just on his outside. Another, another grey, or two greys, right and wide are both two greys. One of them is Napoleon's boots and one of them's. Napoleon Grey, I presume they're probably related in some way, because they do look pretty similar. Silver King is the back marker, one of the horses who isn't a grey, so we say that every week, don't I? I'm starting to bore myself now, anyway, <laughs> take the next, and 
ball safely over that one with Lucky Money and Johansson in the lead then. Just one more circuit to go now then. Off Sandown Park. In this Whitbread Gold Cup, which as we said earlier is pretty much a conditions race with the exception of the top three. They're the only three in the handicap, Fort Lauderdale. Battle of Asparta and it Marbo, Fort Lauderdale and Battle of Asparta are close up at the moment, but that weight will surely tell later on. And it Marbo is stuck in mid division at this stage. The back marker still gospels. It's Lucky Money and Johansson disputing the lead though from the top weight Fort Lauderdale and Battle of Asparta, the second top weight. Next then comes No Half and then War Point and then Princess Peach, then the Mighty Eight, who should be the handicap good thing. It's after that one. And Stoke Hill and half Howard Hancock. Those who might not be understanding why I'm suggesting that the Mighty Eight is a good thing, it's because he is the first horse who is out of the handicap, so to speak. So he doesn't have to give any weight away to any of the horses that he should be giving weight away to, but he still receives the weight from the ones above him. So he is the horse that everybody would be lumping on if this was a, a real race. He'd probably be going off. Very, very short price favourite. But anyway, so Hansen in the lead. Lucky Money is second. Princess Peach is third. Battle of Asparta four. Then the Mighty Eight and War Points are no half. As they come down towards the next end. And over that one they go. And you know, Hansen and Lucky Money still dispute the lead. The field are pretty tightly grouped as they take the sound. Another one's gone there. Fort Lauderdale's gone. So that's the top weight out. So this leaves it Marbo and Battle of Asparta in the handicap as they skip over that ditch well, that one okay with the mighty eights now come through to dispute the lead and lucky money second and princess peach is third battle of Sparta still appears to be going well in fourth and johansson and war pointer and stoke hill as they come down to the railways for the final time then six more fences to take and the railway to the first three of them and we lost another one at the back there that's no half gone this time so no half's the faller and the mighty eight is oh another one's gone and that's it marbo's gone this time so that's the second of the three in the handicap proper out of the race the weight definitely tilling on those and the mighty eight then is in the lead from stable companion battle for sparta in second johansson is third then napoleon's boots and gospels then eyes to the right and phantasmagoria the two of these are trying to run on but they're coming down towards the pond and the mighty eight has gone clear gone clear by three and i would suggest this race is done because as i said before he's favored by the weights the only horse in the race who is better than him or is on anything like equal terms is his stable companion battle of Sparta, who is now struggling under the big weight and the mighty eight is racing towards the final two furlongs and he stays on his feet he's going to win he skips over the second last he's well clear of gospels in second eyes to the right third sharma blur is in fourth and putting up a good effort some of these but they're not going to get anywhere near this leader mighty eight with a ton in hand races up towards the line and wins it by a good six seven eight and she can't see winners like this in the whip normally and the mighty eights win it well from sharma blur in second Probably the moral winner. Gospels in third, then eyes to the right after that one. Princess Peach, Phantasm is after that one. And that's your Whitbread Gold Cup then. And the Mighty Eight is the winner for Joshua Sutherland. Absolutely no fault of his, of course, that it was running in such a favourable position. But you can see there, look, he should have been giving £33 to the second horse and didn't have to give him a single pound. He should have been giving four to the third, didn't have to give him a single pound. Should have been giving seven to the fourth, didn't have to give him a single pound. It's... Um, Unfortunate, I don't know what we do about it, but anyway, it's a win for Joshua Sutherland, and that's the Whitbread Gold Cup.